Hey, this is Matt. Once again, welcome back to another review of another horror film from the 1980s. And this time, it's a personal favorite of mine that I've reviewed quite a few times in the past. Road Games. This is a Hitchcock type of thriller. Imagine... Rear Window, but it was on a moving vehicle. Uh, the film takes place in Australia. Stars Stacey Teach as well as Jamie Lee Curtis. This is a Blu-ray from Umbrella Entertainment. I know there's a Blu-ray coming from Stream Factory. I'm still curious about that Blu-ray just because I'm a huge fan of this movie. And Although this does have quite a few features. So if it doesn't add much, maybe I won't get it. But I love this movie. The, the poster doesn't do it justice. Because it makes it look like an s and weird fucking foot. But it's not. I mean... You could call this more of a road adventure thriller film than a horror film, but still, there's some elements of horror that it could still be part of this marathon. Plus, I, it was a lot of fun watching it again and gladly talk about it as many times. Because this is an underrated flick. I know this is a favorite of Tarantino as well, Quentin Tarantino. He's a huge fan. Because when The Hateful Eight came out, he was asked, like, what's his top three favorite? Australian films. I think he mentioned a film called Next of Ten, nothing to do with the Patrick Swayze film, uh, the first Bad Max, and this film. And it's directed by Richard Franklin, who did Cycle Two. He did the film with Elizabeth Shue called Link, about the killer chimpanzee, which is really a orangutan, but whatever. Uh, I'll get to that one day. And I, I like Link. Cycle Two is a great sequel. But this is my favorite movie that Richard Franklin did. And he was kind of called Australian's Hitchcock. He was a study of Hitchcock. Actually invited Hitchcock to his school back in the day. To talk with other students. And you can tell that Richard Franklin is a huge fan. Kind of like Brian DePalma was a huge fan. You can tell the way he directs the film. Certain ways he has certain sequences set up. And like I said, it's Rear Window, but on a moving vehicle where uh, Stacy Teach is a truck driver and he has a job. Now he's got to take these pigs to the market from point A to point B along the outskirts of the law and open highways of Australia. And he has this dingo for a pet. And right from the get go, you could tell. This is not your average slasher, whatever. Well, I love slashers, but this is not your average flick where Stacey Teach, it's my favorite performance of his. He plays such a likable character. Um, I forgot his, like, Quid? I want to say, like, Pat Quid. Yeah, Quid, Q-I-D. I forget the first name. And I just loved his character. I loved how he had a tendency to talk to himself on the open road, which I can understand. I think a lot of people, they don't want to admit it, but you know, if they're lonely for a while, they'll talk to themselves as well. So it was someone to relate to. I loved his like pet dingle, which, well, he's kind of a dingle, which <laughs> that's a fun bit at the end. Even from the beginning when he's talking on the radio, on the CB, and he's called a truck driver, and he's like, just because I drive a truck does not make me a truck driver. But he's not being pretentious or an asshole. He's, you know, having fun with the person on the CB. And then cut to the killer, and the way this film is shot is beautiful. Like, this is a beautiful uh, Blu-ray. And like the, you have this girl that this other guy's picked up playing guitar naked. And when the killer opens the bathroom door, there's like this bathe of white light. It makes it look almost from another world. And this build up and he puts the guitar wire across the woman's neck. Strangles her with the wire. And I love the music. The music is actually from Brian May, who worked on you know, some of the Mad Max films, among others. I love the music in this, especially the main theme that 
na 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 da 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 shut up computer fuck you for ruining my song da 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 I just loved it. Love the music. I love when he's driving in his truck and the dialogue that he has when these vehicles are passing by, just talking to himself or the dingo. Just a character very easy to relate to. Like he sees a guy with a bunch of like footballs and baseballs and basketballs on the back of his vehicle and he's like, now there's a man with balls. <laughs> Just the way he deadpans it. Like Stacy Teach did a fantastic job in this. I love that his character, he starts noticing things on the road and on the highway. He's the type of guy that likes playing harmonica when he's driving. There's a point where he sees this just married, uh, I think it's like a van driving by. He's watching. And you see like the woman gets up from the lap of the guy. So you get the idea that there was a blowjob. And all Stacey Teach goes is sucker. <laughs> so it's, that's the thing. Likeable characters. Likeable characters win the day every day. And you get a really good actor to play it. Then you can take us on pretty much any journey that you want the audience to take. And I love the I, I love the real window idea to begin with. Many films have done that, whether it be Disturbia or even Fright Night. But the fact that it's a moving, like a real window on wheels, that's a pretty cool idea that I don't think any film has done since. And I'm not saying there should be a remake, but I am surprised no one has tried to remake this movie. I'm shot, to be honest. They'll cast like Russell Crowe or something in it. <laughs> As Quid. <clears throat> but he... He starts noticing things like this... Near the beginning of the film. When he's tr watching his... Dingo, his dog. is barking at the garbage. And he looks up and he sees like the... One guy staring intently at the garbage by like studying in Daisy Teach like why is he doing that or when he's driving he's there's a guy digging in the middle of nowhere it's like what's he digging Wait, he's burying something what's he burying for <clears throat> and there's actually some decent bits of action in the film too Like this guy who's driving a car and he's dragging a boat and he won't let the semi pass and messing with the semi because it's something that the killer did earlier in the film and sort of Stacy teaches being blamed for it. So something on the boat falls like the anchor and it hooks into the Stacy teaches semi, pulls the boat off and teach drives through the boat because he has to there's nothing else he can do as I well that's the little asshole's fault for fucked with Stacy Teach's semi uh, some other stuff happens at least to Jamie Lee Curtis being picked up now Jamie Lee Curtis is in the film a decent amount but not maybe not as much as maybe the advertising would make you think but she does play a pivotal role and I thought she had really nice rapport with Stacy Teach. Well, they're kind of conversing and Jamie Lee Curtis kind of go along with Stacy Teach's Stacy Teach's frame of mind of, you know, what is this guy and why would he do this and if he is the killer that's on this radio, you know, what would he be doing? Why would he be doing this? And I thought Jamie Lee Curtis, which I know she's not a fan of this film, so she's not a fan. 
unless it's fucking Halloween, A Fish Called Wanda, or the new fucking Halloween. She doesn't like any other fucking movie she's done. Well, she probably likes Trading Places too, so it was probably the first Halloween, the new Halloween, Fish Called Wanda, and Trading Places. Probably like the only four fucking films of, his, of her career she likes. Because I know she hates The Fog, she hates this movie for some fucking reason. I know it's her opinion. I just think her opinion fucking sucks. And that's my opinion. And you may say my opinion sucks. Well then that's your opinion. That's how it all goes around the circle of life and opinion and fucks. But anyway. Well at least another and Jamie Lee Curtis's character is gone and this movie does some interesting things by playing up against expectations. Like Stacy T, she thinks he's going to be the badass and get on the motorcycle, but he can't ride it and he crashes it like 10 seconds later. Uh, the way the direction is, like when he's listening to the radio and the radio talks about how pretty much Stacy T is now a suspect and you see the screen get darker and darker in one shot or there's a moment where he's following the the killer's van and the taillights kind of rise up and focus right on Stacy Teach's eyes again some really cool direction by Richard Franklin that makes the film uh, more interesting it wasn't just a pedestrian directing job it, it it made the film not boring at all. At least, again, to me. I would say one of my favorite scenes is he keeps, you know, with a semi, there's a couple, there's deers. So each time he does it, he hears this baning sound. And he stops and he's like, what the hell is that baning sound? And he goes to the back of his semi and the door's not closed. And then when he goes in, He's getting pigs to market, so of course the the meat is hanging. And he counts and he turns around and there's two that should not be there. Those are the ones that made the sound. And the way it's lit in the back of that truck, sort of the slow realization of the audience is like, wait a minute, is that Jamie Lee Curtis? Is that another victim is that people and not a pig I think he touches it and he realizes it's warm and not cold and you know it could maybe be a person or just a pig and sort of that look on Stacy Teach's face like is it is it not I thought that scene kind of symbolizes what makes this film work on a suspense level and on a directing level. I just thought the whole way that was played off was pitch perfect. And like I said, this movie has a little bit of an adventure, like road movie, and even a little bit of an action at the end where he's following the killer's van through alleys and gets the truck stuck and... He's able to rig it and jump the truck and land on the, I think lands on the, the killer's van and fights the guy and beats the fuck out of the killer. But then the, the cops have him. And this is a funny bit where his dingo starts barking. Now, f based on the movie, I don't know in real life, but based on the movie, dingoes don't bark. If you know a lot about dingoes, you let me know. Is that true? Are dingoes, do they not bark or is that just something the movie made up? But dingoes don't bark, but this is barking, so he's not a full dingo. But thankfully for him, people know the dog barking. And that's another thing. I like that he has this dog or dingo, whatever, as a companion. I thought that was a nice touch. And I'm glad they didn't kill it off, like in The Road Warrior or any, you know, some of these other movies. I guess that, that dog's like a half breed, half dingle, half dog. Good looking dog. And then they find Jamie Lee Curtis. 
<laughs> I don't like the first thing she says, like, thought you said he was in the bathroom. <laughs> Just, they, that's how she got caught, is she went into the van, to Stacy Cheese thought the killer was in the bathroom, of course, they were, <laughs> he was wrong. And they catch the killer and everything's fine. And then Stacey Teach and Jamie Curtis are walking off with the Dean Dole to whatever their life entails. But this is a film that I really... The only one nitpick I thought was weird and didn't need to be in it is there's this one weird hallucination where Stacey Teach is driving. And he says a funny line. He's like, maybe I ought to start using dope. You know, maybe I ought to start, take, start taking dope get rid of these hallucinations and then this weird like demon king roof flies into the screen it looks really hokey and silly and stupid then he shoots off and he sees an actual king run by <clears throat> i don't think you needed that in the movie i think that's something that could be snipped out cut out i mean it's not a big deal but it's just one little moment that it's just very goofy and silly I mean, maybe if it looked good, okay, but it looked really like from a 1950s sci-fi sci film. This like almost vampire kangaroo shit. Or whatever the fuck it was supposed to be, but th that's like my only one nitpick. Like, take that little scene out. But other than that, I love the, the characters of Stacey T. Jimmy Lee Curtis. I love the, the premise. I thought it's a really good looking movie. The cinematography. The score by Brian May. I think is fantastic. The, I thought the writer. Everett DeRoach. Did an excellent job on the writing. And you know. Put a, putting us into the main character's shoes. And you know. Is this guy who I think it is? Or am I going crazy? And it's a, it's a entertaining thriller, adventure, road movie with a little bit of horror to it. And wonderfully directed by Richard Franklin. Not boring. Just, I, I love this film to death. And uh, this film, th I think that's why I've reviewed it so many times because I don't think this film gets the credit that it deserves. Because even nowadays, does anyone ever fucking talk about road games? No. Barely anyone ever fucking, well, other than Quentin Tarantino, which is cool. They should have, you know, should have had an interview with him on this, but. I guess if you're wondering what's on this Blu-ray. And one of the reasons this looks good is featured taking from a newly restored 4K master. So it's the best I've seen the film look. I don't know if Stream Factory will look that good or what. Or they'll just steal from this. All your commentary produced director Richard Franklin. The Making of Rogue Games, which that was on the DVD. Uncut Not Quite Hollywood interviews. See so interviews with Jamie Lee Curtis, which... Uh, C.C. Teach, Grant Page, who played the villain, Richard Franklin, Everett DeRoach, the writer, Vincent Montan, and Tom Bernstall. A 1980 lecture on the making of road games from Richard Franklin, co-producer Barbie Taylor, and composer Brian May. 1981 interview with Richard Franklin, 2001 audio interview with Richard Franklin, exclusive new audio interview with Stacey Teach, new audio interview with stunt coordinator and actor Grant Page. 4K Stan Restoration feature by Roar Digital. Interview with cinematographer Vincent Montan. Exclusive essay by Fangoria writer Lee Gambin and Gallery of Stills. Production shots, storyboards, newspaper reviews, promotional and artwork materials, and more. And the HD theatrical trailer. So, pretty stacked with stuff. On a 1600 mile stretch of desert highway, someone is playing a deadly game of sex, violence, and sudden death. But yeah, Road Games. Love this film. I think if you like Hitchcock type thrillers, it's easily 
recommended and then some awesome film highly underrated uh, thanks for watching take care and we will see you for another review later